Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne Vella and today is Sunday, so that means Coffee Clutch about books. Coffee Clutch is uh, a Belgian saying, we are coffee drinkers and uh, in the afternoon we have a coffee and a cookie and uh, we talk about things and my subject is, of course, books and all that is related. So, yeah, I would like to thank, first of all, Bob the Booker for the nice shout out. I'm so honored. I'm so honored. And I'm glad that he really enjoyed uh, Thirst by Amélie Nothomb. Yeah, we met uh, a couple of, well, two months ago. Uh, it was in August uh, on a hot, hot, hot summer day in Brussels. Uh, we spent a lovely evening together and we had the best times and we will definitely see each other again. What else? I did uh, went to the library, so I did a library haul and I read some beautiful books besides The Eighth Life. So yeah, let's, let's begin. Um, knowing that it is doorstopper doom. I went to the library and I bought, I brought, sorry, I didn't buy them. That's next week. Next week we have uh, a sale in the library, 50 cents a book. I brought books that don't fit in um, the doorstopper doom segment. But hey, there you go. I see beautiful books and I want to read them. And so this is uh, Kindred by uh, Octavia E. Butler. This is recently translated, uh, well, this year by Ina Willems in, uh, from English into Dutch. She's finally being discovered in uh, uh, my part of the country. And I'm really looking forward to uh, read this book. This is about a girl who celebrates her, what is it, her 18th birthday or something? No, 26th birthday in 1976. And through some weird circumstances, she's teleported back uh, to uh, where, Maryland, yeah, Maryland in 1815. And there she is. Um, uh, a slave girl, and uh, yeah, uh, and uh, there she has to save a guy. What's his name? Rufus from drowning. But she has to do it all over again every time. A bit like uh, oh, what was the um, the movie Groundhog Day? Was it that? Yeah, Groundhog Day. And uh, so, but more and more she realizes that uh, she has to give her life, I believe, to really save Rufus, if I'm not mistaken. Then I also, uh, when I came home from uh, the library, I watched some uh, booktube videos and the videos I always watch are those of uh, Martin Nash. Martin Nash is a British booktuber and author and uh, his views on books are always spot on. And uh, by coincidence, he was talking about a book that I just brought from the library. Uh, this, of course, is the Dutch version because it's a Dutch writer. It's called "It's the Opposite of a Person." Voilà, by Lieke Marsman. Lieke Marsman is a Dutch author, poet, philosopher. She is uh, still very young. I believe she's born in 1990. Yeah. And uh, she is very much uh, big ideas lady. I mean, um, she can make a beautiful novel of an idea that is more for an essay. So she wants to find an answer to the question, why aren't people more alarmed about uh, global warming? Uh, they were alarmed while it, when it was really hot and when there's a flood, but after that, when uh, normal life goes on, they forget about it. And uh, she uh, tries to find an answer while telling a beautiful story. She is really good. It's a really good uh, author. So I will read this even 
if it is doorstopper doom. Then I also brought uh, Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. This is about uh, a girl, um, Talia, who escapes a juvenile center in Bogota and she really must get a flight to be reunited with her family who lives in the States. I'm halfway in this book and I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Then I brought some other books that aren't translated, so I, uh, it's no use to talk about those. Um, one is by uh, Frank Gianfranco Caligaric. Uh, I talked about his previous book, Last Summer in City, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. And uh, the other one is a Third Country by uh, Karina Sainz Borgo. She is a Venezuelan author. Um, but it's, I can't find um, uh, an English translation yet, so it doesn't really make sense to talk about that book. Um, what did I read last week? Well, apart from The Eight Life, uh, I've talked about already, The Eight Life was a master, masterpiece. Here it is by Nino Haratishvili. Nino Haratishvili is a Georgian author, the country, not the state, uh, yes, where Jim of books, reading and stuff lives. And this is an epic masterpiece. This is oh, oh so good, so good, with very rich and well crafted characters. Uh, throughout the books, they grow and they grow and they grow. It's it's an amazing story. It is set in the twentieth century. It's uh, uh, talks about five different generations of one family going through um, the Russian Revolution, uh, the Second World War, the Soviet Union, the Berlin War, war uh, all those things, and it is amazing. The people in there are very, very flawed, but that is normal. Uh, if you put normal people in an unnatural environment, you will have flawed people. This is a must-read, but it's 1265 pages, and I assure you, when you start reading this, you will put your life on hold, because you can't stop. I couldn't stop. Then I also read The Magnificent Checkout 19 by uh, Claire Louise Bennett. Um, if you are looking for a book with a plot and well-developed characters, this is not your book. This is a love letter to literature. This is a whirlwind. This is, um, yeah, this is a whirlwind. It is so mind-blowing and so innovative. And I've learned so much about literature and reading and the love of reading and ah. This is the story of a girl who uh, comes from a um, working class family, uh, not, not somebody who is motivated by her surroundings to read, but she discovers it all on her own. And oh, the name dropping of books and things. I've, I've had so many dog ears in this book because I read it in the train. Oh, this is so good. It starts with her being a, a schoolgirl, discovering literature and writing, and she develops her talent and she becomes a really good uh, writer. And uh, you are shown uh, books at your, <laughs> your face. And oh, I, I, you can't really describe the book because it's so much of everything. It is so um, crossing, not boundaries, but borders or whatever you want to call it. It is, is, it, it is pushing the limits of what um, uh, a novel can be and that uh, I really, really enjoyed. Also, kudos for the two girls that uh, translated this book into Dutch, Karina uh, van Santen and Martine Vosmaar. Excellent job. They did an excellent job. 
uh, you never felt uh, that it was translated. So that is a very good uh, work. Then I also read um, In Search of Mar Mary Seacole, The Making of a Cultural Icon. We didn't click. Um, maybe it was my mindset. Um, I DNF'd it for the moment uh, at 125 pages, I believe. I, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't get into it. Maybe it was because uh, she has a steep competition <laughs> this week with uh, the other books I've read, but uh, yeah. The first book I read this uh, last week was uh, The Gods of Tango by Carolina de Robertis. I read it in an ebook. Um, oh, what a book this is. Carolina de Robertis is uh, an uh, American author, but from uh, Latin descent. And um, uh, this uh, story is about uh, Lena, I believe, or Leda, Leda. Uh, she is a 17 year old girl who goes from Italy to Argentina alone because she is uh, married to her nephew, I believe, Dante. Uh, but they were, uh, I, well, I don't know what's it called when you marry when the, uh, with a glove. <laughs> it's something they do uh, during wartime when the the husband isn't able to make it and they marry from from a distance so uh, first she gets married and then she takes a boat to uh, argentina when she arrives there she realizes that her boyfriend or husband is dead and then yeah what to do go back or stay there and make a life for your own and um she stays a couple of weeks in her husband's uh, room uh, with his clothes and uh, uh, with her father's uh, beloved violin and she realizes that she um, can pass on as a man because she's very tall and skinny. She cuts off her hair, she uh, dresses up as Dante she takes his name and she lives her life as a, a musician in a, a tango group. And uh, uh, she talks about uh, the life of Dante. This book is beautiful. It's very rich, very vividly told, very... Um, Carolina de Robertis knows how to write with love. And you feel that throughout. She loves her characters. She loves the stories she tells. Uh, when you, if you have read Cantoras, which is the most beautiful lesbian uh, novel I've ever read, you will love this one too. Although this is a book that is a bit flawed, um, I found maybe that's only the ebook. I found a couple of mistakes. Uh, she struggled a bit with the pronouns. Sometimes Dante is a she and then it's a he. I, I think it was a bit difficult to decide because it was written before the use of uh, the pronouns they and them, uh, but that wouldn't fit in this story either. So yeah, um, this is a compelling story. It is beautiful. It is about um, self-development, uh, the love of tango. The love for music, it's, it's, it's oh. of course, uh, Dante also discovers that she has a need for love and she meets uh, quite a few women uh, as a man. And uh, yeah, that, it makes it very complicated because she doesn't dare to tell that she is a woman and not a man. So yeah, it's a, a struggle, but it's also a very interesting to read. So yeah, a definite must read, despite the little errors here and there, but they are not huge. Um, for now, I'm uh, reading uh, For Door Stopper Doom. I started with Shogun. Uh, funny that um, yesterday, uh, Steve, also talked about Shogun, uh, it must be India. Um, 
I love it so far. Uh, Shogun is by James Clavel. Clavel. I'm, I'm only 150 pages in, so I have a lot more to go. But it's a beautiful story. It. Uh, I'm surprised. I read this book when I was 13, 14, and now it's the second time I read it, and it really uh, is still engaging, engaging very much so. So yeah, that's uh, it for now. Uh, next week we have a library sale. I've got some um, really interesting job interviews, and there's one job that really that I really want, and I uh, will have that job. I think I will. I will go for it full on. I will fight like a lioness. Thank you, Bob, for uh, mentioning me. Uh, people are sending me messages. Oh, Bob has mentioned you. That's so nice. And I'm glad that he really enjoyed the thirst. And uh, yeah, this is a wonderful medium. I mean, uh, I've met already so many people, and uh, in this short couple of months I, uh, that I've started this channel, I've met uh, Ketevan already in Paris. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. We did some shopping. We did some uh, drinking. <laughs> Expensive. <laughs> we both ordered the wrong thing. It's really wonderful to meet people in person and on, on my channel. So yeah, please uh, send me give me tips, reading tips. I would Gladly uh, read them. Uh, there's so much to discover. There's so much to read. I, I uh, can't wait to discover more uh, interesting authors and uh, books. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, tomorrow uh, I will post a video on writing. Uh, check that out because it will tickle your imagination. I'm sure of it. Thank you for watching and talk about books later. Bye.